And so we're here today to talk about how to develop a plan that can help you continue to serve your customers and take care of business and have the minimum amount of downtime uh, humanly possible. Business continuity planning is a proactive process that enables an organization to continue to function at an acceptable level in the event of a disaster or severe outage situation. So disaster recovery is a concept originated about 40 years ago as organizations and banks and insurance companies in particular began to rely very heavily on data centers and mainframe computers. And its focus was on being able to recover from a disaster situation that affected the organization's technology capabilities. Um, the concept of disaster recovery has continued to grow through the years because organizations have not only increased their IT infrastructures, but they also began to consolidate them into fewer locations for cost and efficiency re reasons. In essence, they're putting all the more eggs into fewer baskets. Um, business continuity planning is a much broader term, which includes the traditional disaster recovery concept, um, but focuses on enabling a business as a whole to continue critically important operations. I usually differentiate the terms emergency and disaster. Because I ask folks what they think emergency management means. And, and quite honestly, a lot of folks think emergency management is just 911. And I, and I let them know that while in Norfolk, we're unique in that emergency management and 911 is in the same shop. Uh, we're the only city in Hampton Roads that has it that way. Uh, but it's all about resources. If we're talking 911, we're talking about daily response, police, fire, public works, um, the issues experienced yesterday and even last week. Um, we have the resources to respond to those quite efficiently and effectively. Uh, when we start looking to our neighbors through mutual aid, or we're looking to the state and feds, we're talking, we've exhausted our resources and we have to rely on some of the partnerships that we have outside of the area. And that's really more of the, where disaster comes into play. And the focus of PPD-8 is a whole community approach. So we're talking various levels and sectors uh, different levels of government, public-private partnerships, working with the military, higher education, and everyone because we all have a stake in disaster preparedness. Um, you hear the political slogan, it takes a village, and quite honestly, that's the approach that we take uh, in Norfolk and, and mostly throughout the region is we have to look within our own communities for the resources that exist. And, and I think you'll find that there are some incredible talents and resources that we have uh, before we even need to look at the state and federal um, Calvary, as they say. So having, looking at PPD-8, which for us is tied to Homeland Security grant dollars. Um, so it's, it's not mandated, but it is if we want to be eligible for Homeland Security grants. But also, it just, it's a good business practice. It makes sense that, again, we're all in this together. Uh, so we're all going to prepare, plan, train, and exercise together. But I would tell you, that the one thing is to have a plan, but it needs to be a living, breathing process. You can't have a BCP plan, have that three ring binder, or have that real nice, uh, you know, sexy PDF on your website that you pull to and dust it off when a storm's coming or a cyber attack or active shooter, God forbid, or an F-18 crashes uh, in the city. You never know what's gonna be out there. And if you don't have that plan, it's not a living, breathing process. Uh, at a time of an event, you're gonna have a crisis on your hand. It's gonna be t double what you're facing because you don't know what to do. So you have to develop that BCP, BCP plan you have to communicate it with your employees. Uh, you have to train it. Review your after action report, which is probably the most missed step in my opinion. Uh, review the after action report or lessons learned and then apply that back in your plan. And it's a living, breathing process and you start over again. And I would, I would say that you should do that annually at a minimum to, to test those resources out. Uh, if I can help you or help your employees in any way, no matter what your business is, whether you're my competitors or not, I'm here to help you and here to save lives. So we'll share with you our lessons learned. And um, that's something that I think is important. You know, learn from someone else's misery. We talked about Katrina as a good baseline. A lot of folks have learned a lot of critical things from, from some of the disasters that have happened across the country. Look at these websites and, and, and learn from other people's misery. Uh, very sad that they had the issues there, but uh, don't make that same mistake uh, that they made or, or, that, or miss that step that they missed uh, when, when you have an opportunity to go out there and, and capture that. And as I present these particular situations, I want you to think about a couple things. We've had reference to a number of the things in the business plan, but a key in all of this is to understand the human capital. It doesn't make a difference how good your plans are if you've not taken into account the human capital, your employees, 
the relationship with your employees, not just your partners within the community. I'm really into prevention, and prevention is not only the continuity plan, but prevention is also some sound public health measures that need to be taken into account and you need to think about because these sound public health measures address that human capital and the human capital is what's going to keep your business going. Don't make nervous how much how well your phones are working or how well you've been able to implement these other IT matters or facility matters if you don't have the people to carry them out. Um, essentially nearly one in three businesses that suffer a major disaster will fail within two to four months. That's that's incredibly fast. No matter how small you are, you, you've got to look at your resource and you've you got to plan. If you don't, you're going to plan to fail. And if you don't take the time, I know it's difficult. We all have bandwidth issues, so I don't have the, the textbook answer for you. It's going to be the cure-all and take you back and solve that for you. But I would say be creative. If you take, you know, if you have uh, 50 employees, if you take, you know, 10% and train with those folks and then take the next 10% and then work that training and development plan on some type of Gantt chart so you cover everyone, uh, it's critical. Yeah. If, if you don't, you're not going to identify your gaps, and you're going to find out your gaps in the middle of a crisis, and that's the wrong place. That, that is the wrong place to find that out, isn't it? Professor Kirchner, how about you? I think it's important to tailor your plan and, and your um, business continuity management um, structure for the size of the organization you have, and you want to do what makes sense for you. So if you have 50 employees, really what you need to do is take a look at all of your critical business functions. You need to take a look at the risks that um, might affect operations and you need to sit down and decide how you're going to handle any events that may come up. Uh, my job description says emergency preparedness. It doesn't say emergency preparedness only for homeowners. I mean I want to work with you in, in the private sector and we can have training and we can um, I can help you facilitate exercises so there's opportunities there that it's my obligation and my interest to help you with that. And, uh, so bottom line them. bottom line take home here take homes use the technology to your advantage there are a lot of free and low-cost resources out there that can help you prepare for your plan do the plan and then practice 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 and wear your mosquito repellent this summer, please. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. So